It's probably best to compare it with uh, an architecture that people are more familiar with. So if you talk about building architecture, it's a combination of things. It's the thing that you look at, the building, but it's also the discipline that you use to get there. And data architecture is the same thing. It's about having a blueprint of the data in your organization, where it comes from, where you keep it, how it moves around, how you access it. But it's also about the disciplines that you use to maintain, to create and maintain that blueprint. So there's various related challenges. Uh, our big agenda for next year is really to start to simplify our architecture, to simplify our technology infrastructure. We've got a very complicated uh, and distributed architecture. Um, many systems have grown up in specific areas over, over the years. That means there's lots of copying of data, mm -hmm. there's lots of interfaces to be maintained, and it's quite expensive and we can no longer afford it. So we have the simplification agenda to drive through. To be, to be able to achieve that, we then got to actually make progress on getting people to adopt the standards. We're quite clear about what our standards are for things like reference data and how you refer to the same thing in multiple places. Um, but people have to then adopt that in their systems. So simplification is and, and standardization, two things. And then to keep all of that moving forwards, we've always got to keep raising the awareness of what we've got, what, what we want, where we want to get to the disciplines that we need to use, the standards that people ought to follow. So communication is, is the other one, constantly communicating things about architecture. So the, the benefits of architecture um, are sometimes difficult to, to put real numbers on. You can obviously point at the fact that it, it helps improve data quality. Uh, it helps um, create a simpler organization so it can reduce the cost of your organization and it can uh, make, make you a more agile organization. The simpler your architecture, the easier it is to change. Putting hard numbers on that is always difficult because those benefits really get realized through the projects that are doing stuff the right way. However, we've got a few examples of, of trying to attach numbers to it and the simplest one to say is if you spend one pound doing something the right way, you probably save three pounds from doing it the wrong way, figuring out what you've done, undoing what you've done, and doing it all over again. So that's a you know, one pound saves three pounds type argument. Getting the organisation to, uh, to follow our architect architectural common sense is, is our big challenge. Um, the top tip that I would give people is don't be despondent keep at it. You, uh, it's a, it's a, it is the job of an architect is to communicate what they're trying to achieve, what they want the organisation to achieve, and you've just got to keep doing it, keep saying it, and keep arguing with people because you spend your day arguing with people who don't want to do what you want them to do. The whole point about the sticks and carrots um, comparison is it really needs to be a bit of both. Um, you, the problem with the stick approach is you don't have enough people to, to wheel the sticks and to hit the people that you need to hit. So you have to have a, an incentive for people to do it. You have to make it easy for people to do the right thing. And in my presentation later I talk about some examples of that where we've tried to uh, provide things that, that make it, uh, you would just, why would you do it any other way because it's so easy to do it the right way. So that's the carrot. Um, what I sometimes say is actually sometimes you need to have a big enough carrot so sometimes you can hit people with it as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm talking about um, finance things to people in utilities um, and obviously there's a lot that we can learn from each other. It's always good to listen to other people's ideas. Big data for financial services is quite a broad banner. Um, and it means different things because you're talking about the retail side of financial services right down to sort of the complex investment banking side of financial services. So I'm from the latter and actually there's a lot of cynicism around big data in that, those circles that we think it's a lot of marketing hype. And actually what's important to us is uh, the tool sets that are becoming available to help with specific problems. So we have aspects of all of the V's of big data. We have some fast moving data. We've got some areas of high volume, although not as high as probably in utilities or retail banking. And we've got uh, lots and lots of variety of data. 
So it's some of the, the tool sets and the techniques that Big Data brings is we sort of pick and choose from that and we apply those in choosing the right solution for the problems that we face. So we get cynicism, uh, investment banking technology people are generally cynical. Uh, we have lots of cynicism about the title, but lots of enthusiasm for some of the techniques.